I remember walking through the white bark forest in the Tetons and they were all green and stunning. Go back to some of those places now and they're just all dead. Some people know me as the Teton Lorax. When I was very small, I actually grew white bark pine in my family's yard. If the white bark pine disappeared from the landscape, I don't think that we can even wrap our minds around how catastrophic that would be. The native threat is the mountain pine beetle, which is an important engineer of the forest. However, it is unchecked because of human-caused climate change, allowing it to grow to epidemic levels. And you can see here that this female beetle, it's a little moldy, it's been there for several years, but that's the dead female. In addition, the tree is experiencing attack by a non-native fungus that ultimately strangles the tree's circulatory system. However, I definitely don't think all hope is lost. I think there's a lot of hope. White bark pines can live very, very long, up to 1,800 years. They have very grounding energy. When you're around them, you feel like you should just be patient and everything's gonna be okay. Nice work up there, Nancy. I work for Nancy. She introduced me to white barks and tree work uh, the first time here in the Tetons uh, many years ago. The feeling that I get when I return to these trees is a sense of comfort and reassurance. I have a whole new perspective on time and how short our lives are as humans and uh, how long the lives are of these trees. And so in the big picture, we're trying to keep the ones out there that are already there alive and then prepare for replanting. We keep some of them from the mountain pine beetles using pheromone. That works pretty well. And we are preserving seeds for the future. We also work with a geneticist to help us to harness some of the traits that we see in trees that are resistant to blister rust. This tree has some of the best genetics that we know of in the ecosystem for rust resistance and drought tolerance and cold hardiness actually. And so we have spent many years protecting her with pheromone packets. Nancy represents a form of action that's rare in this day and age in the sense that her commitment to this tree is unique and, and special. I've thought about, oh, I'll take the summer off. And then I'm like, no, I have to take care of my trees. They're not my trees, our trees. There's been decades of amazing volunteers who've carried pine cones and hiked long distances and worked out the budget that got all messed up. So there's a lot of unsung heroes. We have been able to expand our crew to be four people, which enabled us to hang more pheromone packets. <laughs> 